2. Its necessity. That the knowledge of God's existence answers the second criterion of necessity will be seen by considering a. That men, under circumstances fitted to call forth this knowledge, cannot avoid recognizing the existence of God. In contemplating finite existence, there is inevitably suggested the idea of an infinite being as its correlative. Upon occasion of the mind's perceiving its own finiteness, dependence, responsibility, it immediately and necessarily perceives the existence of an infinite and unconditioned being upon whom it is dependent, and to whom it is responsible. We could not recognize the finite as finite, except by comparing it with an already existing standard, the infinite. Mansale, Limits of Religious Thought, Lect. 3, we are compelled by the constitution of our minds to believe in the existence of an absolute and infinite being, a belief which appears forced upon us as the complement of our consciousness of the relative and finite. Fisher, Jern. C.H.R. Philos, January 1883, 113, Ego and Non-Ego, each being conditioned by the other, presuppose unconditioned being on which both are dependent. Unconditioned being is the silent presupposition of all our knowing. Perceived dependent being implies an independent, independent being is perfectly self-determining. Self-determination is personality, perfect self-determination is infinite personality. John Watson, in Philos, Reverend, September 1893, 526, there is no consciousness of self apart from the consciousness of other selves and things, and no consciousness of the world apart from the consciousness of the single reality presupposed in both. E. Cared, Evolution of Religion, 6468, in every act of consciousness the primary elements are implied, the idea of the object, or not self, the idea of the subject, or self, and the idea of the unity which is presupposed in the difference of the self and not self, and within which they act and react on each other. C. Calderwood, Phylos. Of Infinite, 46, and Moral Phylos, 77, Hopkins, Outline Study of Man, 283285, Shed, Dogm. Theol, 1 colon 2 11. b. That men, in virtue of their humanity, have a capacity for religion. This recognized capacity for religion is proof that the idea of God is a necessary one. If the mind upon proper occasion did not evolve this idea, there would be nothing in man to which religion could appeal. It is the suggestion of the infinite that makes the line of the far horizon, seen over land or sea, so much more impressive than the beauties of any limited landscape. In times of sudden shock and danger, this rational intuition becomes a presentative intuition. Men become more conscious of God's existence than of the existence of their fellow men and they instinctively cry to God for help. In the commands and reproaches of the moral nature the soul recognizes a lawgiver and judge whose voice conscience merely echoes. Aristotle called man a political animal, it is still more true, as Sabatier declares, that man is incurably religious. Saint Bernard, Novarim me, Novarim te. O. P. Gifford, as milk, from which under proper conditions cream does not rise, is not milk, so the man, who upon proper occasion shows no knowledge of God, is not man, but brute. We must not however expect cream from frozen milk. Proper environment and conditions are needed. It is the recognition of a divine personality in nature which constitutes the greatest merit and charm of Wordsworth's poetry. In his Tintern Abbey, he speaks of a presence that disturbs me with the joy of elevated thoughts, a sense sublime of something far more deeply. Interfused, whose dwelling is the light of setting suns, and the round ocean and the living air, and the blue sky and in the mind of man, a motion and a spirit that impels all thinking things, all objects of all thought, and rolls through all things. Robert Browning sees God in humanity, as Wordsworth sees God in nature. In his Hohenstiel Schwangau he writes, This is the glory, that in all conceived or felt or known, I recognize a mind, not mine, but like mine, for the double joy making all things for me, and me for him. John Ruskin held that the foundation of beauty in the world is the presence of God in it. In his youth he tells us that he had a continual perception of sanctity in the whole of nature, from the slightest thing to the vastest, an instinctive or mixed with delight, an indefinable thrill such as we sometimes imagine to indicate the presence of a disembodied spirit. But it was not a disembodied, but an embodied spirit that he saw. Nietzsche, Christian Doctrine, Section 7. Unless education and culture were preceded by an innate consciousness of God as an operative predisposition, 
there would be nothing for education and culture to work upon. On Wordsworth's recognition of a divine personality in nature, see Knight, Studies, 282317, 4054261, Hutton, Essays, 2 113. See, that he who denies God's existence must tacitly assume that existence in his very argument, by employing logical processes whose validity rests upon the fact of God's existence. The full proof of this belongs under the next head. I am an atheist, God knows, was the absurd beginning of an argument to disprove the divine existence. Cutler, Beginnings of Ethics, 22, even the nihilists, whose first principle is that God and duty are great bugbears to be abolished, assume that God and duty exist, and they are impelled by a sense of duty to abolish them. Mrs. Browning, The Cry of the Human, There is no God, the foolish Seth, but none, there is no sorrow, and nature oft the cry of faith in bitter need will borrow, eyes which the preacher could not school by wayside graves are raised, and lips say, God be pitiful, who ne'er said, God be praised. Drive W. W. Keane, when called to treat an Irishman's aphasia, said, Well, Dennis, how are you? Oh, doctor, I cannot spake. But, Dennis, you are speaking. Oh, doctor, it's many a word I cannot spake. Well, Dennis, now I will try you. See if you cannot say, horse. Oh, Dr. Dear, horse is the very word I cannot spake. On this whole section, C.A.M. Fairben, Origin and Development of the Idea of God, in Studies in Philos, of Relig and History, Martino, Religion and Materialism, 45, Bishop Temple, Bampton Lectures, 1884-3765.